Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeat.com and welcome to another episode of the YouTube Shop Student. Now I don't normally put these out very often, but uh, occasionally when I come across something uh, another person on the uh, internet has made or, or it's been displayed somewhere um, that I would like to make uh, from a student's point of view, um, this is where I like to put it. So what I've got going on, um, I have a series called uh, the uh, Kenneth Well Stationary Engine Build, right, that I've been doing. And I need a, a tool, right, that I can put a spot face on this casting, right? And uh, I'll, bring, I'll bring the camera in close so you can see what I'm talking about. But you know, uh, metal castings, they have what's called draft and taper, and so nothing's really square and, and that sort of thing. And that's the whole reason why I gotta put the spot face on here so that the nut will um, sit down on there and, and uh, actually clamp this casting down to the uh, frame that's gonna, or to the uh, bed plate that it's gonna go on. So I will bring the uh, camera in closer so you can see what I'm talking about. And uh, I like to, uh, although this man's not around, I'd like to thank uh, <clears throat> uh, Curly, LBC. Uh, I'll have the book here in just a second, I'll show you. So let me uh, let me get the camera in and we'll take us a look. Okay, so if you follow or have been following my um, uh, Kenneth Wells stationary engine build, you will know that um, I've gotten quite a bit done on this. I don't, I don't know if you're interested or not, but anyway. Um, but I'm at a point now where the engine frame will need to be mounted to uh, the the bed plate or the, the base plate. And if we see right here, maybe I can get that up here, there's a note here that says spot face, right? So what I need to do is uh, make a, um, a flat area where these two holes are so that the nut will sit square. And so you'll see that there's, there's angles here, right? It's tapered. You know, it's kind of flat across there, but you know, it's anyway. There's nothing real flat and square about a casting, right? So I need a tool that will cut that spot face. Now, the uh, nuts that I'm using are made out of a quarter inch um, hex material, right? Quarter inch across the flats. So these are the these are the nuts that I plan on using. Okay, so the spot face has to be big enough for the whole face of the nut at the corners to sit down on and um, and seat, right? So that's uh, that's how big. So I'm going to go through um, an exercise here and making a what's called a pen drill, right? Or a, it's kind of like a countersink. And uh, credit goes to. Uh, LBSC right now they call him Curly it's Lawrence something I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head if somebody remembers put it down in the uh, comments but anyway this book here simple model locomotive building introducing LBSC's Titch right and in this book he discusses a few few uh, things about making tools and and right in here on this page here on uh, page 44 um, is a paragraph that talks about this and uh, about this pen drill. So that's what we're going to uh, try to make. So let me get a piece of paper in here and let's do some calculations and see what we got to have. Okay, so we're going to have to have a few bits of information. Okay, the first is um, that I've drilled these holes uh, 964, uh, 964 of an inch, uh, which is about 140 thousandths. Okay, so my I know that the little um, pen at the end of the drill is going to have to be uh, that size or just slightly smaller to fit into the countersink hole to guide the to guide the countersink and then I know that I need the spot face to be at least as wide as the diagonals of the hex are so there's a couple ways to do this and I uh, was just gonna whip out a chart and say hey let's uh, let's figure this out but you know what I thought for the fun of it we'd work out we'd work it out mathematically so if we have a hex, now, excuse my poor drawing abilities here, okay. Okay, so that's really a horrible hex, but you get the idea. So if we have a hex that is uh, 
0 0.250 wide across flats. Okay. What I want to find out is what is it across, let's say, the widest part. You know, what's 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 this measurement, right? So that's that's what I want to find out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the center of the hex, right? And we're gonna draw a line to a corner, okay? And then we're gonna draw another line bisecting the side. Okay, so we know the length of this line, right? is half of the distance across the flats, right? So instead of being 0.25, it would be 0.125, right? And if we take um, six vertices of this uh, hex and divide 360 by six, we get 60 degrees. Now, since we bisected this one, we know this angle here is 30 degrees, okay? And what we're wanting to know is this length right here. So there's a little mnemonic that I've always remembered or tried remembered. I always called it um, so toa right? so toa right? So sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent equals the opposite over adjacent. So here we know that we we know the angle and we know the adjacent side, right? So what would give us the opposite, so, uh, or the hypotenuse here? Well, we know that's cosine, right? So we know that the cosine of 30 degrees, right, this angle right here, equals um, the adjacent side, which is 0.125, divided by the hypotenuse, which is, in this case, is x. We don't know it. So we do a little algebraic manipulation. We end up with x equals 0.125 divided by the cosine of 30. x equals, well, we'll get the calculator out here and see if this will show up. Okay, so we said 0.125, right? So. 0.125 divided by the cosine of 30 equals, okay, so x equals 0 0.1443, 0 0.1443, okay, well, that's the hypotenuse, right, but that's half of the distance, so we actually need to know twice that, right, because we want to come over to here. So we'll take x times 2. So 2x equals 0.288. All right, so we know that the distance <clears throat> across flats is 250 thou, or a quarter inch. The distance across the corners are 288 thousandths, right? We need at least that for the corners to seat on the face, right? So the next uh, fractional size up from that would be 5 16 Okay, 5 16 is equal to um, 0.3125. Okay, so that would be plenty big enough for the spot face. So I've got some 5 16 drill rod. Okay, and we know that I need to turn down um, a pilot on there. That's going to be the diameter of our to fit into the um, to the clearance holes for my 540s, right? Which I told you I drilled 964. 964 is equal to uh, let's see, 0.140. Yep, it's equal to 0.140, 1.406. We're just going to call it 140. So we'll have to turn down a little pin here on the end. Um, we'll say maybe a quarter inch long because you just need to get the stick in the hole, right? Just need to get it stick in the hole as a guide. And uh, it's going to be 140 thou, quarter inch long. And then I think if we cut our blank, I'll oh, we'll say enough to hold it in the chuck. Let's say three and three quarter inches long, that'd be enough. And uh, 
that should be it. So let me uh, let me cut uh, let me cut a piece of stock down here, and we'll get over to the lathe, and we'll start turning. Okay, so I have a piece of stock uh, and a five sixteenths collet. Now there is a lot of stick out here, um, but I am not going to. I've already faced this off, so it's clean. I'm only going to take very very light cuts and slowly whittle down about a quarter of an inch off the end, uh, down to one hundred and forty thousandths. So if you can see that they will fit so that that pilot that I'm forming will fit in this these holes here and if we flip that around you can see there so that's what I'm interested in and I want that a fairly close fit you know th this can be a thousandths or two smaller you know this is not a precision tool that I'm making here all right so I'm gonna turn down um, here's here's the whole overview I want to turn down this here so that we have the pilot so it's gonna fit in um, the holes that we the clearance holes that we have in the casting and then that's really all the lathe work I need to do from there I will take it out and grind it or file it flat on each side and then form some facets but I'll cover that when we get to that so let's get started here okay, just like that and I'm going to take a couple of spring passes each time just like that And I'm only taking 10 thou off here at a time. I, I, I can't take too big of a bite or I'll, I'll bend the rod, bend the uh, piece of silver steel or drill rod, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's see where we're at. Okay, I'm at uh, two. I'm at two seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety-five. I'm at two ninety-five. So I got a ways to go. I'm going to take uh, several more uh, cuts, and then I'll bring you back in when I'm close to being done. Okay, I just measured it, and I'm at one seventy. I want to go down to one forty. That leaves about thirty thousand. So it's probably going to be about another three passes. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm getting close, I know. All right, I'm at uh, 125, 35, 45, 146. So I only need six thou to come off. So I'm going to try to sneak up on it. I'm going to take the four in theory. I'm going to take uh, two off the radius. All right, let's see what we got. So that's 125, 140. That looks like it's right on the nose. Yeah, probably 139 and a few tenths. So let's uh, let's try it on the casting. Oh yeah, it fits in there. Fits in there good. I, no perceptible play. So that's that's going to work. So let me uh, just bump the edges and knock off some sharp edges here on the point. Okay, this can come out of the lathe now and um, come back over to the bench and I'll explain what the next next uh, next process will be. Okay, what we're making is what Curly um, calls a slot drill with a pen or a pen drill. So what I need to do is I need to put some cutting edges on this. Okay, and probably the simplest way to do that, if we look at our paper here and uh, call that the pilot right and then this is the silver steel 
or drill rod that surrounds that pilot. In other words, we're looking straight onto it. What I want to do is I want to take these edges off just like this, right? So we sort of end up with a, a flat, you know, we, uh, a flat on each side, right? And then what I want to do is um, file these back, right? That way and this way to form two cutting cutting edges. So that's what I want to do now. So there's a couple ways to do this. You could file it by hand, right? Uh, if you got a grinder, you can grind it. Um, if you have a, a sander, you can sand it. But I'm going to sand these down and uh, and then I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so I've went over to the grinder and you can see that I've ground two flat, flat on each side. And you also notice that I hit the uh, pen too, but that doesn't matter because this outside edge here is the size has not changed. So the next thing to do, if I can get this to focus, is I need to make a couple cutting lips, one on each side, reminding myself that this thing was going to turn this way, right? So I need to make sure I pay attention to the right side. So I'm going to stick this in the vise. Um, so I can file those cutting edges and what I'll do is I'll file and bring it pretty close to the end and then that's where I want to stop and then we're going to harden and temper this thing so let me uh, let me get this set up in the vise okay so I have the pin drill in, in the vise and hopefully you can see this here you see I've started filing the back edge remember this is spinning this way right as I'm viewing it from the working end so I want to file this back to an angle of about 5 degrees, 7 degrees, somewhere in there, until I get very close to the edge. And then I'll turn it around and I'll do the other thing. But uh, essentially I'm just taking my file and, and I'm going to gently work that until I get close to the edge. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing. So let me, uh, let me file on that and then I'll bring you back in. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. See how I filed that back on that side and filed it back on that side. That's going to, these will provide, these will create my cutting edges so that when this goes in like this, it will cut. So you can see that. Well, maybe you can see that. So you can see that. So now before we can actually use this to cut anything, We'll have to harden and temper it. So let me get the uh, torch and the fire bricks out and get that ready and then I'll bring you right back in. Okay, so we're ready to heat this thing up. We'll get it cherry red. Now this is water hardening grill rod that I got from Hobby Metal Kits from Bernie. Okay, that's cool. We'll hit it with a file. Oh yeah, that's just skating off of there. All right, so I'm gonna clean that up and then uh, we'll temper it back. So I'll bring you back here in just a second. Okay, so I have the end brightened up here so we can see it change colors. I'm gonna apply the heat back here and I'm gonna let it creep up and, until that turns a nice straw color. And once it does that, we're gonna pick it up and dunk it again. that it will the temper will crawl up to the tool point
Okay, the straw is starting to creep up in there. You can see it. All right, that's probably good. All right, I'm gonna quench that. Still pretty warm. <laughs> I mean, it didn't burn me, but it's warm. Let me cool it down some more. Okay. All right, so that should have brought the temper back just a little bit. I think I temp tempered it back to purple. Yeah, that's sort of a, well, nah, it's, it's a dark straw there up to the cutting edges, so I think we'll be okay. So I'll clean that up, and then I'll take some, uh, I have some uh, easy laps. Uh, diamond lap, so I'm going to lap the edges and sharpen it up and then bring you back in and we'll see what we have. Okay, so hopefully the camera will focus in on that, but you see I have those edges sharpened up to the edge, right? There's some relief on the back, so it should cut. So that should work. We should be able to make a spot or a countersink. Actually, you could probably use it to make a countersink if you needed one that size, but... Uh, we only need a flat spot for the uh, for the nut to sit. So let's uh, let's go over the uh, drill press and find a piece of scrap of aluminum, and let's see if it uh, does its job. So I'll see you over there. Okay, recall that uh, my engine frame had a 964 um, clearance hole for five uh, 540 screws. So I got a piece of scrap aluminum here. Let's see how this does. Hopefully, I can keep my and out of the way. Okay, that will uh, represent my clearance hole. Now let's get the bit we just made, the, our, our pen drill. And let's see what it does. Okay, well our pilot fits there pretty good. All right, I'm just, oh yeah, it's cutting pretty good. I've got no um, cutting fluid or anything like that, but remember I'm gonna be cutting in aluminum. And, let's see, does that show up? It's a nice spot face right there. So I think that's gonna work. All right, so let me uh, bring the camera back over in, and I've got a couple parting things to say, and I'll let you guys alone. Okay, guys, so my engine casting, and I have the, the pin drill, right? Fits the pilot hole real nice, and we know from our sample piece over there that it's going to cut it just fine. All right, and again, that, uh, I found this little project here inside the uh, Model Locomotive Building introducing LBSC's Titch. Uh, engine. Uh, speaking of uh, model locomotive building, uh, if you check out Mr. Factotum, he's uh, in the middle of uh, building a, I think it's a meter made. Um, it's an OS 260, oh, I can't remember. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Factotum, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, I, hey, look, I want to give a shout out to Emma. Emma, thank you for pointing this book out to me. A lot of great information in there. Uh, the tool is definitely going to work for me. And uh, for you guys that want to see it uh, in use, uh, check out the uh, check out the uh, upcoming um, uh, Kenneth Wells stationary engine build uh, when we drill these spot faces here and do some other work on the engine. So, other than that, uh, hey, thanks for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate the comments. I know at this uh, this time uh, and place in the world in uh, March of 2020, it's kind of weird. A lot of us are. Uh, quarantined, stuck in uh, from the uh, COVID-19 virus or whatever you want to call it. Um, stay safe, wash your hands, you know, uh, be careful about the number of people you get around if you can. 
uh, you know, um, just take care of yourself. So look, if these um, videos are helpful, uh, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Um, tell your friends. If you subscribe, hit the little bell, and uh, you'll be notified when I post. So other than that, have a blessed day.